Hello and welcome to the Anomaly Presents podcast, the podcast about genre movies, this time about the genre movies in the Genre Film Festival, the Anomaly <gasps> Film Festival, coming soon to your living room. Yeah, we're coming Bye. for you. Goddamn right. <laughs> My name is Matt Knotts, and this is my favorite show of the year. It was my favorite show last year. It's my favorite show this year because we've been toiling away like like Santa's rejected elves in in the <laughs> wow in, in in the broken down tree all through quarantine trying to find. Wait, are we are we messed up Keebler elves? <laughs> Damn, it's didn't even make right. it to the workshop. You guys stay in the tree. I don't, okay. This explains the amount of cookies. Yeah, yeah. So this yeah. We do get cookies. Yeah. 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 Cookies. Yeah. 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 I don't mean to get this far off track up front, but yeah, it's Santa <laughs> are level one, level two are Keebler elves, level three are the anomaly elves. Oh. Joining me tonight. Um, my name is Matt Knotts. Tonight we've got, let me see if I can do this because this is fancy new video powers. We've got Kristen Pelk Pacheco. <laughs> Megan Murphy, yeah. Matt Deturk, yeah. Adam Lubato, <laughs> featuring Aaron Murphy. Yeah. <laughs> Gene Smith and the Saturday Night Live band. <laughs> and this is the Look at the power you program. have now. Oh God, I've, I've. Yeah. What do we do? What did we do? <laughs> what did we do? It's, you thought I was drunk with power when I got the soundboard. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! This is visual. Wasted. Yeah, that. He's wasted. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> no one should have given me this. I have way too many buttons in front of me. So, yeah, we're here to tell you about all the cool shit that we found. We scoured the globe to find all the cool shit that we could find so we could pipe it into your living room, Silver Shamrock style, right through your TV <laughs> and into your eye holes. It's coming. It's November 12th through the 15th. And we're here to tell you about what we found. We're going to yes. open the conversation up with our opening night movie, because that's usually a good place to start. <laughs> it's Paper Tigers. Uh, who wants to talk about Paper Tigers? KP? Yeah, I'll go first. So, <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't want to, you know, bust at the seams. <laughs> I guess, to say, anywho, so Paper Tigers. Uh, I just thought it was fantastic. So, you know, three estranged friends coming back together after their master, you know, dies and maybe life didn't turn out exactly like they thought, you know, they always thought they were going to be friends. They also thought that they would always kick ass. Unfortunately for some of the movie, that's not the case. <laughs> I would say a major chunk of the movie. They are not yeah. kicking ass. No, except for their own by pulling muscles. Yeah. Old yes. age, not kind. Yeah. <laughs> It is very much like um, Karate Kid 20, 30 years later. Like, what if when you're like, you know, you're a young prodigy and then that didn't happen? Or like, that was it? Like, what if that's your peak and then the rest of your life you're trying to like, you, there's regrets. And maybe like you didn't keep evolving and growing. Maybe your dreams stayed at adolescent dreams and then become adult dreams. And, and it's that. It's very much like, you know... It, it, it weren't his thing. It's it's a perfect movie for us because we're all probably about the same. Like we're all middle aged. Let's just be honest. Okay, we're all right. We're all middle aged, right? Talking about it's so fresh face. <laughs> yeah. And it's like okay, you know, certain decisions need to be made, certain realities need to be faced, but not like in a dark way. Just in a very much like, you know what? Every character in this has something they got to face and like move on, you know. And then maybe you know help the next generation. Yeah, like, and I think an important part of it, too, was legacy, right? Yeah. What, what is the legacy of the people who came before you that they kind of viewed upon you? Mm -hmm. And do you kind of live up to that? Or how do you carry that on? Yeah, yeah. You have people who kind of, like, uh, went away from it. And then you have their, like, <laughs> their, like, adolescent nemesis, who, 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 oddly enough, both stayed with his teacher, but is also still a dick. 
<laughs> yeah, I think he might be a good teacher. Like it's weird, but I love that. I love that. Like what echoes? Like as you grow up, what stays with you? <laughs> but mm. also maybe like how do you like what changes? Yeah. But there is fight scenes. There is maybe at least one rooftop showdown. I know. I know. Yes. Like I don't. Yeah. Rooftop showdowns are. Yeah, so you you uh, gotta have a rooftop showdown because it's yeah. it's got that. Classic throwback action comedy, but with heart. Yeah. And I yep. feel like it's got to, at some point, climax with a rooftop showdown. It it's had it's to. written in, by, in law. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, it's like it's heartwarming. You know, it's funny. It's heartwarming. You're going to have a good time. Like, you'll smile. By the end, you'll be smiling big, like, all right, good for them. Good for me. I'm going to be okay. <laughs> They're okay. I'm okay. We're all okay. Which is the perfect way to start the fest. <laughs> yeah, festival. yeah, yeah. It's like, the, just, their reassurance. <laughs> yeah, just wrapped in a cozy little blanket. <laughs> <laughs> that feeling doesn't last long. No. <laughs> but then the rest of the festival happens. We take you on a roller coaster. It's a ride. Okay. Rip the blanket and from a, you, push you. The a bit off the back. roof. You're, <laughs> off the roof. You're off the roof now. Throw some water in your face, you know. Experience 4D. You the floor at your face by pushing you off the roof. No, that's not true because I have another warm and cozy movie that I think we should talk about next. Um, it's The Columnist. Rude, man. <laughs> <laughs> I meant wow. what I said when I said we ripped that blanket away from you. Yeah. <laughs> and I meant what we said a 4D movie. Yeah. Just throw water in your face when, you know. Splashes. It wouldn't be, of it wouldn't be bodily fluid happened though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're not gonna throw blood on people. <laughs> Megan, I have a specific question for you. Yeah. As someone who sees a lot of comments, did this movie oh. speak truth to you about reading the comments on the internet? Uh, I I have nothing on this poor woman. Oh my god, <laughs> she dares has opinions as a woman online, and this movie sets up like, and she gets exactly what you expect. Just you know, anonymous, you know, bullshit threats and calls out. And then, okay, so maybe does maybe what some of us have imagined might be the answer, which involves some murder. <laughs> Very creative, direct. Yeah. You thought you could hide behind a laptop, and yet I found you, and now you have a reckon with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, maybe, like, uh, I mean, I don't think the movie's totally, like, you should do this, but there is part of the movie that's like, well, this is pretty satisfying, right? <laughs> this feels pretty good, right? Uh, it's not encouraging you, but it's supporting Oh, God, no. Ends. Oh, God. I, I would never say this uh, movie was encouraging revenge murders, but it's also, like, Pretty cool though, right? Like you know, <laughs> encouraging revenge murders to just hurdle you over that creative writer's block that you just exactly speak. she writes better after she does it like a little cleanup. Uh, a little <laughs> murder can be cathartic, like, yeah. yeah. Just a fact of life. Yeah. Are you glad you're not in a dark theater with us right now? <laughs> Get ready for next year. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, so I would call it kind of like a dark comedy. It's got some thriller elements, but it definitely has some humor. Like, it's not, you're not watching it with, like, uh, not in your stomach. You're mm. more like, uh, oh, my God, what's the next thing she's going to do? And where would I stop? <laughs> you know, at a certain level, like, you go, like, okay, maybe that's too far. I don't know. But, yeah, it's uh, it's it's enjoyable, and it's just definitely got that, like, just that, that edge of, like, it's funny. Maybe I shouldn't laugh, but I'm still laughing. And a lot of bike riding. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty European. <laughs> I was say, that is a fun in there film. Way more than most American films. Another great part is the kind of mirrored relationship that, like, her daughter is facing. Ah, you know, yeah, at yeah. school, right? So she is trying to fight for free speech mm -hmm. and is going head to head against the principal. So you you get that kind of both of them running parallel with each other. I like, yeah, it is kind of a nice, like, kind of mother daughter film. But, like, what if you got a little obsessed with the wrong thing? You know, like, you, maybe you're not helping the world the way you think you are, but still fun. Nah. Fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler. Don't worry. Just fingers. You'll know what I mean. You'll know yeah. what I mean. And also, crisp white suit. I want to uh, get one. I'll have gotta nowhere get to wear one. it. <laughs> gotta get one. Mmm. Yeah. Katie, I'm here for your columnist cosplay, actually. Oh, this, yeah. oh my God. Great. Yes. Damn. Yeah. A suit and a pair of shears, and you're set. 
I can full on rock that in the lobby and next a, year. Maybe a box of keys. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we can arrange that. Yes. <laughs> Just standing Excellent. there. Hey, uh, read your comments. Yes. Snip. Yeah. yeah. What, 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 <laughs> here's the idea. We sit you next to the iPad where everybody does the, the, the polling for the movies. Oh, God. <laughs> well, why I invite me? <laughs> <laughs> just be nice. Yeah. Right. We'll just make sure that we get everybody's honest, constructive criticism. Uh, yes. And it yes. will be fine. <laughs> I love us. <laughs> so, this will be evident someday. It's fine. It, it really will. This is all admissible, and I think that we should worry all of us. Um, come, <laughs> coming off of that, we've got uh, a documentary. Um that is actually gonna warm your heart. We really are taking people on a roller coaster ride this year. <laughs> we are. We're gonna put the blanket back on them, fully secure them. We're sorry, in the ride. we're sorry. We yeah. got mean there. Don't worry about yeah. it. We, it's it. We're we're a weighted blank blanket and a bag of oranges this year. It's um, <laughs> the weighted blanket for this one is the last blockbuster, um, a documentary about. Well, the titular last blockbuster um, mm. in Bend, Oregon. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, anybody want to want to say anything about it, or do you want me to take the the reins? You go for it. I'll go take for it. Matt. All right. I'm sorry because you are a uh, gold card member, As so a blockbuster rewards gold yeah. card members since yeah, yeah. the year 2000. <laughs> <laughs> um, this movie touched me in a very very special way. Um, it is a. It, it really does three things. Um, it, it's kind of a tongue-in-cheek history of Blockbuster. Um, it's the story of the folks running the very last Blockbuster in Bend, Oregon. And if you don't absolutely fall in love with the person that runs the last Blockbuster, uh, you have your heart. Yeah, you will want to be adopted by Sandy by the end of the movie. It, she uh, is just an endless delight. Sandy is is everybody's mom or aunt. And yeah, I... I I can't wait to go and visit the place. Um, and it's a third reminiscences from your favorite comedians, actors, podcasters. Yes. You know, everybody from every walk of life talking about going into Blockbuster, walking in the door, that smell hitting them, and then just being whisked away to, you know, the place where time stops and you just live in film world for a while. Um, which, you know, is kind of what we're doing here this weekend. So it's nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I like the last blockbuster. Anybody else want to say anything about it? I thought that it was also really, really remarkable as a doc that it tries to find a balance between talking about blockbuster itself as a company and then general video store culture and what we are missing as a society by not having video stores anymore and whether we blame blockbuster for that or we blame Netflix for that or we blame just societal like foolishness attention span <laughs> <Yeah. Societal laughs> yes. but i also think it's really it's like very sweetly and like fondly assembled there's like a mix of there's some miniatures there's some shots of like you know run down blockbusters there's shots of the current one it just it runs a fun gamut of making you miss the collective sense of movies like that you did communally which we're also missing this year of course so yeah. But trying to trying to replicate virtually, so and it takes you on a ride that you don't <laughs> think it's going to take you on. You're like, oh, it's going to be a doc about the last blockbuster. That's pretty cool. I did not anticipate the adrenaline um, <laughs> that you got. You know, waiting for information to like. I was like, okay, especially when you know when we talked to the filmmakers the other day, like, and hearing that they weren't prepared for where it went. So it's just like. Be per you you gotta watch this. I hope people watch this because I'm just saying I'm teasering it for you. Like the story goes places the the filmmakers didn't even prepared for it to go. I wasn't prepared for it to go. So like where were Russell Crowe's memorabilia? Where was it gonna go? Where was it gonna go? Where was it gonna go? And then you had to clean the boxes and put them in. Is that the his, his like pants from Gladiator? Oh, it's all it's it's there's not a lot of dismemberment in this film, but no. it's still good. <laughs> It touches you in such a warm place in your heart. And then who knew she would have to have a cache of computers 
She'd have to become her own little like IT department because There's a lot of fun little details in there. Yeah. There's fun details you wouldn't think about running literally the last blockbuster, you know, like when it comes down to it, how do you physically do it? And it's just like hearing people's stories and it's just such a warm place. And it made me just, I can smell every time they go in there, what a blockbuster smelled <laughs> like that plastic <laughs> of the covers. And anyways, it's just, it's a roller coaster emotionally. <laughs> So, speaking of rides you didn't anticipate going on. <laughs> nice. Well done. These transitions are fire. <laughs> it's jumbo. Um, and honestly, I'm just going to call on somebody because Matt and Adam saw this. What was it? Kansas City? Is that where you saw it? Uh, Chattanooga. 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 And... I think like the like, next three weeks afterward, we just kept hearing about Jumbo. So do you guys kind of <laughs> want to talk about Jumbo and, and and why it warmed your hearts and why we're showing it? Yes, after seeing it, we were determined to bring it to Rochester. Um, Jumbo is an offbeat kind of romance that I feel like only Anomaly can provide. <laughs> like, I feel like it fits us so perfectly. Um, it's about a young woman, kind of awkward, um, works in an amusement park um, that has a new ride, a tilt-a-whirl, um, and she finds herself curiously drawn to this ride. And over time, she falls in love, like true romantic, I want to be with you forever kind of love. And it's a strange story, but a beautiful story and it's sweet. And as Matt would say, a little sexy, a little sexy. Yeah, <laughs> Listen, that, 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 will. that oil. Mm. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm -mm. That, I'm sorry, lubricant, really. That, oh my. That scene reminded me, <laughs> the first thing that came to mind was that Jan Jackson Buster Rhymes <gasps> video. It was immediately what came to mind. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and go back and watch that video. <laughs> I mean, that movie like walks a tightrope. It, it could have yes. fallen on either either side of being just ridiculous or too serious. But it's you know, I think we keep saying the word sweet because it is like you feel yeah. very like protective of this young woman, and you're like she's figured out a way to engage romantically as you feel like she hasn't before. Like never like that, it didn't click because the way her mother did isn't the way that she's going to. And then you see this joy of like oh she she gets to feel this. She just had to do it her way, you know? Mm -hmm. And whether that can be a metaphor or just read straight, I love it. You know, it's just like everyone yeah. needs to get where they need to go the way they need to get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, oh. I'll say, like, one of the highlights was of this movie for me was, like, just watching uh, Noemi just really sell it, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone could have just done that. It really mm -hmm. required work there, and she did it and sold me on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is her first film after Portrait of Lady on Fire? I think, yeah, yeah. I think so. And Nailed it. Yeah. Two for two for two me. For two. Bam, bam. <laughs> I'll, I'll, say, I'll say the other thing about this movie that I also loved was like, it, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Outside of obviously the scene that we've already mentioned, I used to work at an amusement park and the best feeling for me was like late at night when all the lights and sounds are kind of going on, right? It kind of feels otherworldly. Mm. So yeah, it's just mm -hmm. her and this, and they just are able to capture that feeling beautifully. So. Yeah. It's great. I love it. So yeah, I'm excited for people to see it. No dismemberment. <sighs> <laughs> I like that this is our rating system now. Yeah, it's, a, it's a little dicey. Amusement park rides. <laughs> it's like a regular <laughs> tilt the world. It's one of those like up in the air, like next level. So many accidents could have happened, but no, because they loved each other and they respected each other. <laughs> Safe. Safe. That's right. Don't get. I'm just saying, like, don't anger her lover. Okay. I think it kill right. you, dumbasses. Right. Anyway. <laughs> So I guess from there, I think we get to go to some dismemberment again, right? So it wouldn't be anomaly if we didn't have an anthology horror film. And this one is, uh, it's dark stories. I'm quickly going through dismemberment, dismemberment. I feel like there was dismemberment <laughs> in there. Hmm, I don't no? know. There's a lot of weird, wonderful, like scary stuff in there. I just don't know if limbs get ripped. Oh, I, uh, I would say- apart. 
Uh, yep, that's Fall apart. Yeah. Yep, right. there you maybe go. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Thank you. We're, we're like, we don't want to spoil anything, but maybe, you know, all body parts don't stay where they belong. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm not going to go old Joe Bob and give you a count of how many limbs are dropping off, but yeah, I mean... <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll talk. About, so I love horror anthologies because you're always you're always gonna have like something you like better than the others, and you always like you know 15, 20 minutes you're on to something else. This one has like this lovely. Like, it's one of my favorite uh, like wraparound stories that I've seen for an anthology, <laughs> where it's a little bit of like a, a Shahrazad situation where there's a woman trying to keep a weirdly designed killer doll like it's designed like a middle-aged dude which is like a choice and i don't <laughs> but like a doll anyway but like trying to keep uh this doll uh occupied and to protect her son so it's the perfect setup like well what about this story what about this story which you know it's kind of a classic but i love it because i it kept you engaged like oh what's happening after this is oh yeah there's a whole story going on while these other stories are being told and uh, we hit all sorts of uh, supernatural creatures. You got ghosts. You got gin. You got weird painting monsters. <laughs> you got aliens. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is a little bit of a rarity for a horror anthology. So, I'm mm -hmm. oh, sorry, French aliens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're very fancy. Yeah. yeah. So, like wow. anything you could want. Like you want something. You want a zombie? Boom. We got you. We we got you. <laughs> That's, I mean, that's why I loved it too, right? It, I think it hit so many great yeah. notes and then it was just, they were all tight, compact yeah. stories and they just, I was always like, what's next? Yeah. What are we going to, mm -hmm. what story is yeah. going to be next? And then we would come back around to the creepy puppet and I'd be like, <gasps> oh no. <laughs> she's going to make it? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> And I like that there was a bit of a tonal difference, like a little more humorous, a little more serious, but just not so wild that it didn't hold together. It was just enough that you're like, oh, that's delicious, but I'm full of that. No worries. <laughs> Keep oh, please, no more it. gin. No, it's okay. For, for now, there is ghost. <laughs> I could, not another bite. <laughs> a full course very delicious extravagant yes. meal yes, yes yes was that the one with the lady talking to the person about the, the kid <laughs> I mean, you yes do you mean things. the scary puppet no i would remember that yeah, no, you, you, would, you would remember the middle-aged dude puppet <laughs> no where she is an adopted kid yeah did you watch a movie that was almost the same movie, but not quite? <laughs> or or did you just, did you did block out, did she blocked out the doll? Or Eric, maybe, okay. it might have blocked out the doll. Blur? Like a blur in your mind? Like you The can't aliens see? came down and worked some magic? Like <laughs> I, guess, I guess, sorry. I'm just saying, this is such a good film that my brain was like, maybe you don't want to remember all of this because it's scary. Your brain is protecting you. <laughs> It wants you to be able to re-experience it because, like, what's better than seeing a film for the first time? We're dying. <laughs> and then I'm getting like, as you're, as you're talking, I'm getting flashes, but I'm like, but those don't all link together. I'm That's so I'll be watching this. With <laughs> I the dis. <laughs> you know what? You're lucky in your blood. You are lucky. We are blood related today. That today. was amazing comedic timing. <laughs> That's the funniest Chiron I've ever seen. No, and you, brother, not not blood related. I'm the Murphys are in trouble. We're, yes, what? Todd. No. Uh -uh. Come, on, come on, sis. We got this. It's all right. No, it's fine. It's love. We, we got oh, it's all love. Dude, yes, dude, you're dude, all. We got, we got a segue. She's, she's. We're in trouble. We are in trouble. <laughs> I just train. Really. <laughs> Correct the train. Enough, we have another puppet movie. <laughs> <laughs> we're good. We're good. We're safe. We're safe. We're safe. We're gonna make it, guys. We're gonna make it. <laughs> Gremlins: The Puppet Story. Story of Gremlins, and it's a puppet story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not selling that well. Does somebody else want to tell that better than me? Do you want me to take it? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So, uh, literally, if you uh, love Gremlins, and who doesn't, because iconic, amazing, um, this is literally the story 
of the making of the puppetry and creature effects and special effects for the seminal film. Like it is told by Chris Wallace, who is the puppet designer um, for Gremlins. Um, and it literally is his own film that he's put together from his own archival footage and photographs of making Gremlins. Mm -hmm. So it it's, it feels incredibly intimate. Sometimes you like a doc because it's got more of like an expansive feel and it feels like it tells you everything ever. This is the exact opposite. This one feels so intimate. It feels like he's in your living room telling you step by step how they made Gremlins. And it's just amazing. I like that you've been describing it to some people as, as almost like a TED talk. Mm -hmm. That Yeah, it's literally just his personal footage from the making of the movie and his narration over it explaining the process. And it's just, yeah, for anyone who loves Gremlins and anyone who has an interest in uh, makeup, special effects, uh, creature design, um, it is... I'd almost say it's almost an invaluable resource just to see like you see, see them testing out different methods and what works to make them move and what doesn't. And you just, it's so cool to see how the gremlins evolved into, yeah, like the iconic characters that they eventually became. I mean this in the best possible way. It's like way back in the day, sometimes like your family would go on vacation and they'd be like, doesn't everyone want to watch like, all the vacation slideshow and then move their way through the slides. And you're like, this is a lot because I wasn't there. This is the opposite version of that. It feels that intimate, but this is literally, no, I need to show me more. No, show me everything. <laughs> Bring out the next stack of carousels. Cause I just keep going through them because it is so like raw and intimate in the best way. It's, it's just, yeah. As Adam said, if you love gremlins, this is just, it's catnip. It's great. So, Dismemberment. <laughs> Actually, wow. from what I depending hear, on how you feel, say yeah. Uh, that's. I feel like you can make a case. Ah, ah, good, good. As I was thinking, some 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 tests don't go well with the puppets. They they occasionally lose a limb. Yeah. Oh, you I'll said love. the puppets, not the put it on the list. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, puppeteers are 100% safe. I promise. We have as to far wait. as we know, yeah. we have to. Right. Wait. That's yeah. also fair. Good point. Right. So, yeah. so next year, if somebody makes the Elf documentary, we'll see the dismemberment of the puppeteers. <laughs> ALF. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. Alien life form. Gordon Shumway. I heard that was one of the most dangerous sets ever built. Yeah. Because I, of the puppet holes, because yeah. the actors would keep falling. <laughs> Oh One of them goodness. really destroyed her knee going through a trap yeah. door behind the couch where Elf would pop out. Wow! <laughs> I remember hearing that. That's mm -hmm. the whole thing. So you could say Osher probably was not very well followed on that set. <laughs> Whereas apparently the gr Did Gremlins Osher would never exist? do that like you. Never do that to you. Gremlins no. want to make sure that you're okay. That's right. <laughs> warm blanket right over you. Yeah, yeah. We're back to the warm blanket. Elf doesn't give a shit. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> KP, little known fact, OSHA was established because of the elf set. Who knew? Yeah. What? <laughs> it was elf <laughs> <laughs> They were like, we can use this everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> elf related, how many elf related incidents have you had this month? <laughs> and all my OSHA... cats are missing. Yeah. <laughs> OSHA yeah. actually stands for Achmonic Safety. Ha! What? Nope. Oh no, that's, that's beyond me. That's, yeah. that, that's an elf deep cut. See, yeah. the, the neighbors in that show were the Akmonics. Oh. Yeah. Akmonic wow. safety, and then Elf would always go ha. Yeah. So, yeah that was... I unfortunately they... got that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's because we're that related. Was... Nah, it's because I'm old and sad. <laughs> As was that joke, Meg. Um, <laughs> Wow, I adore us. <laughs> We're fun. Don't you want to spend the weekend with us? <laughs> but like not in the same room, just like in our energy. Yeah. And then you can turn it off whenever you're done. Say, <laughs> you've got some distance. <laughs> yeah. and that's about two hour chunks and we're done. Right. I'm Get funny that. when I'm in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's burger. It's sir. a Bob's. It's a Bob's oh. burger quote. It's the first episode. He was in the wall, oh, and Bob yes. was making. We got to stop explaining your jokes. I, I was. 
They land or they just fall flat on their face. But whoever listens to it, it will hit somebody. Bob (laughs) Burger fans will get the joke. Bob was saying how he's funny in the wall when he was funny in the wall. Whatever, I'm done. (laughs) I I just thought your medication was hitting, so it's fine. Um, (laughs) Didn't even take it today. (laughs) (laughs) Moving on and moving up. We're going on to the Egg for Horror trailer show. Yay! (laughs) Uh, do you want to go, Adam? You, you want me to? I don't uh, want to. I don't want to hug no, the joy. I, I'll let you take it. Oh, okay. But then you got to come in. Like I'll tag you in. Okay. Because if we're talking Deal. about something about you know a, a bit like the last blockbuster where like you feel you are missing a uh, experience, which like right now is like going to the movies. Uh, the uh, Agfa horror show uh, horror trailer show is going to take care of it. It it's about an hour's worth of. Um, Let's all go to the lobby. Uh, countdowns. It's uh, tra- rare horror trailers that some of them haven't really been seen in this quality since those movies were released. It's all that extra little inferior, like those weird little ads, stuff about hot dogs, and uh, you know, make sure that you put the speaker back and like don't drive off like an animal. But curated, like so, it's the American genre. Film archive. Film archive. And they have just curated this perfect little like uh, uh, meal, I think I'd say, where you're sitting down and it's like having the whole film experience, either in a, a drive-in or or just sitting down in the dark, eating your popcorn, watching the previews, but the previews just keep coming. Yes, yes. nothing but previews. Oh, and it's God. all all the weird stuff. It's all expectation. <laughs> yes. But ge- like genuinely, like for me, it just put me in this like this this really like kind of happy, joyful, almost like it's almost like film ASMR. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the, like it's the sound and the rhythm of like, yes, I am at a theater and they're telling me to go buy food. And then I did and candy. And then I did. <laughs> and then they're telling me about stuff I want to see later. And I do. <laughs> That's such a great description. Yeah. That's an excellent description, man. That's exactly it. Did you watch this and just did it function like like for me? It was the Sears Wish Book for adults. Oh yeah, I want to see this. I, <laughs> I want to see that. that. I want to eat that. that. I'll I'll figure out some of that stuff might not exist anymore. That's fine. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Old Dracula with David Niven. Right. What? <laughs> I, I added that to the podcast list immediately. We have oh. to find it. Oh, yeah. oh. I was going to say. I feel yeah. like there are lots of things that have. Anomaly presents potential down the line. I feel like uh, have a notebook and a pen with you because you're going to want to take yes. some notes about stuff to look up because you're going to forget because then the other thing comes and you're like, oh, that's awesome. And then three things more. And then uh, how can you choose? Four <laughs> <laughs> feel- K no los dos. Smorgish, a smorgasbord of just genre goodness. Yes, a buffet. Yeah. <laughs> It's wonderful. I please, yeah. I, yeah. I would say don't miss that. It's, it's so much joy. Fun. <laughs> you should probably have popcorn or maybe a hot dog with you, or you're gonna want to like pause it and go get it. Exactly. You want to keep it old school. You don't want to have the most. You want to do is maybe a pizza roll. Don't, don't do anything more fancy than oh, that. Mm, 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 mm. Don't spend more than five bucks on the food you're eating. Yeah. No. It, it, <laughs> it should be yeah. trash, and it should all be trash with its origins in like the mid seventies. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You're at home, so if your stomach gets upset, you're safe. <laughs> Why? The closest is bathroom is right there. Yeah, that is also the the beauty of virtual is that the pause button is your friend. It's there for you, and you can use it whenever you want. You don't have to worry about what are you gonna miss. Ooh, you do, the just, th- yeah. do the thing I used to do: take a Twizzler, you bite off both ends, you put it in the soda, boom, edible straw. That's true. Ooh. All that sugar. And- it's <laughs> you know you shouldn't be doing it but you're doing it because you already have a straw it's not like i don't have a straw i have to do this i wanted to do this and i said get out of my way straw you're no longer needed <laughs> god with licorice and <laughs> saving the turtles one sugary treat at a time but only at the, only at the movies i can't have oh, to do that behavior outside in, in the light that's in the dark <laughs> in oh, a place no, I-, I don't own i 100 percent do that in my house <laughs> well, I but also I'm one of the monsters who forgets that you can pause in your own home and just like runs to the bathroom uh, just turning up the volume so I can hear it from my living room and then runs back 
It's 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 a choice. It's a choice. Because I'm like, oh, I have a pause button. But anyways, I'm that monster. But continue. This is a great point. And it's a great time to bring up the fact that this is a virtual film festival. So not only can you pause it. Yeah. Watch event watch.eventive.org slash anomaly works on your cell phones and iPads as well. <gasps> you don't have you can be with you the whole weekend. So you are you're never alone. <laughs> And neither are we. <laughs> so, <laughs> Emotionally, physically, or mentally. Your your kitchen, your living room, your your bedroom, or that unspeakable place after the pizza rolls. You can take us with you. <laughs> We're in and your you don't pocket. have to miss one second of the action. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. We're in your pocket. You forgot to turn us off. <laughs> I would also like to say that it's a one-way connection. We can't see what you're doing. <laughs> they make us say that. They make us say that, but you don't know. You don't know. Nope. Legal reasons. It's absolutely a one-way connection. Absolutely. <laughs> a one-way connection. That villainy chart's going up, and I left my chart in the other room. Well, it's not just villainy. I just wanna, we're just friends that are helping them make good decisions this weekend. Exactly. It is also available on the Roku. Uh, there's an event of app on the Roku and on the Apple TV. And uh, all you have to do is there's an activation code. Uh, you click up in the right hand corner where it says activate app. It'll spit out a code. You put it in there, your your app on your TV. And then we're right there in your living room on your big screen with you. Oh, boop, boop, boop. before I forget, plenty of dismemberments in trail, like like all sorts yeah. of dismemberments. <laughs> It's a bygone yes. era of trailer where they show you so Everything. much good stuff. They know that <laughs> you're going to be there for a very specific thing. Yeah. I think actually, wasn't the trailer for I Dismember Mama in there? I feel like it was. <laughs> I mean, there was definitely wow. lots of limbs being ripped, like torsos. Yeah. Yeah. All, the good, all the good stuff. All the yeah. good stuff. So, Meg, I'm hearing we both need like a badge of honor, but also maybe a scale about amount of dismemberment in certain films at this time. Yeah, you know, like I just feel like, you know, sometimes you go in and there's not enough and you feel sad. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's more like on expectations in the movie. That's fair. You gotta go yeah. in with like the correct expectations. If you can have just like one of those half moon dials with just like the dismembered yeah. arm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> See, the I was thinking set. like a. Like a one, two, three, four, five, you know, like one arm, one an arm and a leg, you know, <laughs> two arms and a leg. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yes. Well, I was thinking about parts of the arm, like down here and then here. And then the whole arm shows when there's no dismemberment. I anyway, love, those I are the love scale. how all of our brains work. <laughs> <laughs> it really is magical. <laughs> Good thing we have graphic designers in our crew. <laughs> Good thing. <laughs> where, Meg's like, where? Where are they? <laughs> John Travolta in Pulp Fiction meme. <laughs> God, I'm dyslexic. I can't do this. I can't do this. Well, I'm I'm fucked for segues here. So the legend of Baron Toa. <laughs> um... <laughs> this I think the segue I was trying to think of was something to do with like speaking of hands, but no, that yeah, doesn't no. work. So Matt's no, was better. I... I was, yeah, I, I just gave up. Speaking um, of other skills that our members hold in this team, let's wrestling. No, gone. You can't do it. <laughs> We're, passionate. Passionate. We're passionate about wrestling. Pa passion right. away, Matt. Yeah, we, yeah. Take it away, Matt. Passion, passion for wrestling that at least one and a half, three quarters, maybe three of us have. Um, <laughs> the Legend of Baron Toa. Um, it's a film from New Zealand. It's it's an action movie. It's it's a movie about a, a son trying to you know live up to a, his father's footsteps, um, and it's also about professional wrestling and, and um, just some good old fashioned ass kicking. Um, <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it really it's just it's a crowd pleaser like um i watched it the the one afternoon um and usually this is kind of a, a solo mission at my house when i start watching the anomaly flicks um my kit <laughs> my, my my better half doesn't really in, enjoy these so much she uh <laughs> she, she's low on the dismemberment scale she, she uh yeah if there's any more gore than a bloody nose she's out um so I was watching this and she got sucked into it. She caught it maybe about 15 minutes in and just sat down next to me and, and watched the rest of it. It's one of those movies that's super compelling. It, it's, 
it's just nice. It's a fun action movie. You know, if you're a fan of, again, if you're a fan of Karate Kid, you know, if, if you know, you're jonesing for more Cobra Kai kind of stuff, this kind of puts me in the mind of that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's a blast. And yeah, if you're, if you're a pro wrestling fan at all, um, you know, kind of the, the legend of, of Tongan wrestlers and how they are the absolute most badass human beings on the planet. Um, and Baron Facts. Toa absolutely is. And it's kind of the story of how his son takes up the mantle as the next absolute badass. I think that this also had, in my opinion, the best chase sequence that I have seen oh, all year. Yes. Since the whole thing is him defending like his neighborhood of his uncle's house. And there's like this group of like punks and everything in the neighborhood. But he chases one of them through all the like neighborhood yards and through, through the houses. Neighborhood. Um, and the camera follows, and I, yeah, I, I thought the chase sequence was just utterly fantastic. It was super great. Like the whole time, I was ducking because I was like, "Oh God!" I was like, "This is running into stuff." It was great. <laughs> it, it really put me in the mind of like an Edgar Wright movie, the way the the camera yes. kind of moves yeah. with them, and it's super kinetic. It's a blast. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The movie is a ton of fun. So, who wants to take the honors on sleep? Adam, you want to kick it um, off? And I'll I can say, yeah, I can, I can do my best. Um, sleep is uh, kind of an unsettling psychological horror movie uh, about a young woman who travels to a remote village in Austria, tracing the source of these nightmares her mother had been having that she believed to be real, um, and ended up leaving her, uh, giving her a nervous breakdown. And so her daughter kind of tries to find answers about where this is coming from, what her mother believed she was seeing. And so she ends up in this kind of village and specifically this hotel in the village and ends up delving into sort of the, the unknown history of the town and the way her family connects to it. And it's got kind of a dreamy feel. I would say it's almost, almost David Lynchy kind of oddness and unsettling and kind of uh, I described it in the first as like a, a waking nightmare and it definitely it has that feeling to it it's just you it leaves you unsettled and unsure and you know, terrified about where things possibly could go and it's great it's 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 yeah it's it's just a solid solid horror movie that yeah I think people will like I'll say I, mean, I like one of the, the themes of it was the kind of generational trauma, right, we're dealing with here, which you don't necessarily realize. Because like you said, we don't know what's happening. Like the, the the mother, it swears up and down that she's experiencing, you know, these dreams that are real and the daughter doesn't really believe it. And as she starts going there, there's just that uneasy feeling the whole time and you don't know. I would say it's like one of those movies where like the twist wasn't there, right? You, 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 it wasn't like, Oh, I immediately know what's happening here. It's you're, it's just kind of lurking underneath and you're trying to figure out what's happening. Really? Is it like a psychological mishap? But I, I loved it. I love the way it looked. Everything about it was fantastic. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, I think it is not a predictable horror movie that you can like, once it starts, you can predict like, I know where this is going to go because you, you don't. <laughs> you don't. Yeah. So watch it. <laughs> and and don't, you know what? Maybe have a shot while you're watching this. One. <laughs> <laughs> Will do. I mean, that's celebrate. just solid advice for pretty much the entire festival. <laughs> I know, but like specifically there's like, <laughs> I will say when things really get going, they get going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, okay. This is going to hit me hard. God. <laughs> yeah. Depends what the shot is. <laughs> Tequila. <laughs> yeah, bottoms up. <laughs> Let's see. It's- Let's see if I can land this. So you took that shot of tequila. Don't fall and hit your head because then you'll bleed with me. That's the next <laughs> film. Okay, so that's like a, a middle me. effort. We went from low Good to Lord. high to that. That was a journey. That was, that was a, a journey. <laughs> All right. 
So bleed with me. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. Movie, movie that's, yes. That's, yeah. Uh, as a command, absolutely not. Yeah, no. I, I don't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. I just, I just, I just, you know, I like my blood. I love in. you, but yeah, we have to set boundaries. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no blood in my here. body. <laughs> right. Blood stays in. That's right. Unless. You're no. in this movie because you don't know. No. no, no. Okay, so this is the um, I'll say it's a you know, a slow burn, but it's perfect because it's in it like in an isolated wintry cabin, and you have this like young woman who you start to realize might have some some problems that she's dealing with, and she has kind of been invited along with like her a friend and her friend's boyfriend who is like less than thrilled that his girlfriend brought like this weirdo with them to, I think what was supposed to be a uh, romantic, uh, you know, uh, cabin vacation. Uh, and instead what unfolds is a what's real, what's not, what's in this woman's head. Is her friend just a very nice person who wants to take care of her? Or is she some sort of uh, witch who's trying to steal her blood? <laughs> that old chestnut. Nope. Yeah. I'm gonna say so, something we've all wondered about certain members yeah. of our you know friend circle. Yeah, that person's too nice. They want there. my blood. Yeah. Some, yeah. Sometimes you know you just have those friends that are just soul sucking your energy. Maybe it's blood. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the movie plays very much with you're as unsure as she is of exactly like what's what's going on. Is what I'm seeing real or not? It's very dreamy nightmare as you're trying to kind of figure out what's true in this situation in a situation that no one can leave because like it's you know i think as uh as rochester folk in general we understand those feelings of it's too snowy you are where you are right now and whatever's happening is going to happen you can't escape you can't drive away from this you just have to stay in the maybe my blood's being stolen situation as we all have been there been there done that You know where else we've been and done? The twentieth century. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I, was say, I like how we're all now bracing ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we know it's coming. I, yeah. <laughs> no, I thought you were gonna say speaking of like wintry, snowy isolation. Like, oh, oh, that damn. would be another one. God damn it. Yeah. Do that one again. <laughs> speaking of wintry snowy isolation, <laughs> my writer didn't get to me early enough. <laughs> Um, I, I, I want to jump in on this one because yeah, I do. just, Matt, this I, I love this film so much, which says a lot about me, <laughs> um, but the plot of it more or less is about William Lyon Mackenzie King, um, who is a politician in very snowy, very cold, what will become Canada and he wants to become the first prime minister of the Dominion of Canada. Um, but that's like the plot. And that in and of itself is like, oh, is this selling me on it? Well, let me honestly like straighten this out. But then I mean just add a million twists because it's literally, it's shot almost like a German expressionist silent film with a lot of early like film techniques. Um, there's puppetry in it. There are bananas sets that are just like large like white boxes that are like you know that's they're there to suggest icebergs and snow um there are shoe fetishes there is gender <laughs> bending <laughs> casting in it um it surprisingly has a fair amount of like tension like the entire thing you're very uneasy through it but it's also beautiful like Stylish movie. This is just about as stylish as you can get. Oh, mm -hmm. I, feel, I feel you should mention that. Oh, sorry, I'm not going here. Oh, you should mention that. Like most of this never happened. This is a historical <laughs> movie. Now, some of the names are real, and Canada exists. But besides that, <laughs> as far as we know, does, yeah, does yeah. it the, exist I, right I don't now? Think the, well, I don't know. Here's the thing. Theoretically, <laughs> would, would you say this is possibly like? Fan fiction about Canada. <laughs> oh, oh. Like, oh, this is 
Nice. KP, this is extreme AU. Like, yeah. this one throws so many other cannon, like, throw so many other pairings into this. Ooh, this is, yeah, yeah this is wild. It's, it's as, as, much, I understand. as much as I wish that, like, political uh, decisions were made by ice skating through a maze, <laughs> I, I feel like that probably didn't happen. Also, of course, there's not as many narwhal uh, piercings. In history, listen, Megan. Say, history is all the worse for it. I see, exactly, just, it's just it in history. Can I just say how you guys were describing this film made me gave me a feeling of like Stefan on SNL. This movie <laughs> has everything. I mean, yes. I kind of. Of, I would go to the New York Club themed to the 20th century. Ejaculating <laughs> like, cactuses. Yeah. Yes. Like, see, where's the lie? That's. Everything. Every, this movie has everything. It honestly does. Like, this is the fun of historical Canadian biopics. <laughs> yes. It's there, so no fun. Do you Both like those. my Madden films? Watch this. That's it. Yep. I'm going to say, since the election, the U.S. election is literally the week before Anomaly, like, this is, you should watch this to see how politics should be played. <laughs> I'm all in. I'm all in. <laughs> Sharpening my skates now. Yes. So I'm hoping we don't say this in that following weekend. Um, our next it won't film, matter. I blame society. <laughs> Damn. I mean, that was that was too real, but you know, well done. Sometimes that how that's how that rolls. Damn. <laughs> so I blame society. Um, I think. Let's see. You or me, KP? Where, where do you want to go? Oh, I, I can kick that off. So I kind of equate this to a, I think it's a perfect film for right now, right? People are obsessed with serial killer shows and forensic files and podcasts about serial killers. So like, what if your friends told you you would make a good serial killer? So you also <laughs> happen to be a director and make a documentary about it. Just give it a try. Dapple in it a little bit. But you're able to avoid all the pitfalls because you are the, like, you've watched all of this media about profiling and mistakes that get made. And then you find that you're fantastic at it. So, like, that's, wow. it's like a, it's a what if. <laughs> yeah. I would say that's, that's a hundred percent true. It's, it's a, what if it's, um, I think my, my elevator pitch was it, it's American Psycho if you replace Christian Bale with Lena Dunham. Yeah. Um, oh my god. <laughs> and that's that's it's a very up to date millennial version of American Psycho in LA. Um, it, it's it's very funny. It's 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 dark. It's funny. It it's kind of shocking at times and yeah it's it's a, a a lot of fun it's it's a it's one of my favorites yeah this is yeah a a mockumentary satire um that's yeah hilarious but goes to some dark places and i think yeah is just so smartly constructed and has a lot to say about you know yeah culture and and independent filmmaking i think you know it's about i don't want one hand, the the lengths uh, a director will go to to get their first feature made, um, and I think there, yeah, there are just so many layers to this that, uh, and it's just so fun to to peel them back and watch, um, and yeah, it's just it's great. It's uh, yeah, it's I love this movie. It goes places it's... I didn't anticipate, and that's what makes it so much fun. It's it's great. Um... Sounds like that's a theme for a lot of our films. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a quick, not any spoilers. Dismemberment. Fine. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Ah, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> she is pretty creative. I was gonna say, <laughs> she, like, she has oh, multiple no, methods. Yeah. Yeah. Chilling yeah. way you said that because, like, she she understands if she kills people in the same way that she will be profiled. So she's got to mix it up. Oh. Or like who she picks and how she so, does it. So this is educational. 
Okay, <laughs> first of all, no. Is off no. The no. <laughs> I didn't say I was doing it. I said there was a possibility. Negative. <laughs> oh, finally. <laughs> What? It's gonna be a late night for me trying to stop whatever nonsense you get into. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, KP never gets a good night's sleep, and it's my fault. <laughs> no, no, it's all of our fault. I don't, I can't take it all on me. We're, we're nope. all equally a problem. Nope. Mm -mm. nope. Beep beep. Uh, mm, yeah. Wait, the bus? Are we? Are we forgetting? Like People find themselves <laughs> under the bus. <laughs> no. <laughs> you, you know what this sounds like? I got the segue. You know okay. who talked like this? The Antichrist. <laughs> I... Okay, tell it's... me more. <laughs> the Day of the Beast. Did I do it? You did. Yay! Oh, you're sister of the Antichrist. She sucks. Okay, 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 hear me out. I think you're maybe interpreting this wrong. <laughs> I, I, I am Elaborate. talking about Satan's son who's coming to Earth to destroy things. Like, Is that what right. you thought? Then yes. we're right. Anyway, yes. so <laughs> continuing in the the time honored tradition of anomaly bringing you a heartwarming Christmas film. Exactly. Yes. Have exactly. you ever wanted we're to calling it? Be in Madrid in the in Christmas. It, it must be beautiful. Oh, we don't quite get that. We get parts of it, but we get like the crappy parts because <laughs> here's the deal. Uh, there is a Catholic priest and he has been really crunching the numbers on revelations and he's like, he's figured it out. He's figured out when the antichrist is coming and when, and he realizes his best chance at finding out when the, this evil child should be born is he has to get like in with like the evil cult and stuff. So he's just going to have to start committing crimes until he's noticed. So he goes to Madrid where this is going to happen. And he uh, teams up with this kind of lovable, cuddly death metal fan and a uh, a cult uh, mystic who's basically full of bullshit. And uh, together they try to help this priest, uh, you know, commit enough crimes so they can, you know, uh, summon a death cult that will then take them to where the Antichrist is being born. And some LSD was involved. <laughs> <laughs> so, you Heck know, shenanigans ensue. Gory shenanigans. So a feel-good Christmas movie. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'll I'll give you this. It is or anomaly. Here's the thing. It's funny. It's kind of mm -hmm. silly. I mean, it's dark, but not in a nihilistic way. In more of a like, oh boy, those crimes escalate. But he's doing it for a good cause. <laughs> he really, really feels yeah. like he has to do this. You know, like there's the a best man. Of intentions. Yeah, yeah. Like it was, like one of the early ones is I think you could tell a man was in an accident. And he's like lying there and the police let him in because, oh, he'll give him last rights. And instead he tells the guy he's going to burn in hell and takes his wallet. <laughs> you know, because he's starting small. You do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's uh, it's that. It's, it, it definitely has like, um, you'll, you'll have a smile on your face, I'd say, for most, you know. And then maybe a few. <laughs> depending. <laughs> depending. Depending on your level of villainy. Well, no, and like <laughs> if you enjoy stuff, like if you have good taste. I was like, you're basically describing that like Day of the Beast kind of is <laughs> I, I don't know, our festival condensed into one film. Is that it? I feel of, like if you want options? I feel like if you want one that kind of really sums us up, like yay, it's Christmas, Satan, drugs, <laughs> a cult TV series. <laughs> Oh, yeah, <laughs> cuddly death metal fans who like just really want to help this priest. Yeah. Psychedelics. It's like, exactly. Snow, the winter, <laughs> lights that twinkle, a chase through um, a wintry holiday street. Oh, a cross that legit just falls and kills another priest. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the lies? No. I do not see them. <laughs> None detected. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Chrysler. <laughs> Merry anti-Christmas. I'm workshopping it. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I still got like a week or something. I mean, we're good. We're good. We're good. Watch the movie. You'll enjoy it. And I'll get back to you. <laughs> it's the anomaly way. <laughs> <laughs> See this joy that we have? This is what you'll have. Yeah. It's 
it, it's joy or psychosis. Either way, you're going to walk away from the Anomaly Film Festival with something that's going to warm your heart forever. Or <laughs> say no los dos. Something will burn. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, a little intense there. Let's bring it in. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're at the holidays. Oh man, sorry. It's, it's, it's cool. It's fine. So, so let's talk well, about. I think I I don't even have what Meg. Did you have one? What? Oh, so I had one. Okay. And I I just I spent it. I just spent the All segue. Right. I'm so I'm sorry. So I'm sorry, Matt. I failed was, you. It was going to be a long road. I was going to do a thing about the Antichrist looking for for their significant other and the. Uh -huh. You know, in the the lifetime Christmas movie, and they were just uh -huh. be looking for their Empress of Darkness. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll take it. I mean, it's also late in the podcast. I went for like an hour on that. So really, it's Empress of Darkness. It was that, or tying it into psychedelics, because this thing looks like a nineteen seventies. I mean, it, I I I mean this in the fondest way possible. I um, it looks like every cool conversion van I've ever seen in my life in motion. <laughs> Um, so uh, I'm, I'm going to tag Matt and Adam in so they can kind of talk a little bit about Empress of Darkness. Um, cause it's one what? I haven't seen yet and I am so excited to see it. What I think is most impressive about Empress of Darkness is the entire film is animated by one guy. Like literally he did the whole thing. Um, he wrote it hand drawn, hand drawn, written, directed, uh, all the sound effects, mm -hmm. um, some of the voices, um, but entirely 2d animated by one guy. Um, and yeah, it very much at times has a Richard Williams sort of like, it feels a little bit like it feels like this is building up towards like a thief in the cobbler sort of a situation in terms of the quality mm -hmm. of the animation and the way that it's so fluid, it has some of the most original character designs also I think I've seen of the entire year. It kind of feels like your best D&D &D game kind of come to life where one elf has been uh, captured by an angry horde of these mutant ogre sort of creatures. Um, and then he escapes and they chase him. And literally that is the movie is a gigantic chase through a fantasy landscape um, where he is trying to save their world from eternal darkness. Um, it has kind of this really fun kind of throwbacky techno score, uh, which is super fun. So the whole thing is like bright, bright colors and techno music and just mind boggling amounts of work uh, and artistry. And so it's just, it's such a singular piece. Yeah, there's so much creativity and imagination up there on screen, and you can see it in every frame, and it's just a delight to watch. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's the kind of thing that makes you really excited to see where this filmmaker goes next and what he's going to work on in the future. And you're just like, well, I'm going to follow him for forever from now on. So, yeah. Oh, I can't it's <laughs> It also, I will say though, Aaron, yes, I think you should see it. However, slightly high on the dismemberment scale because it, yeah, there's actually a fair amount of blood and gore in it. So, but animated, animated, and the blood animated. Is yep, yep. So Something it's like here. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, it is not for young children. So, no. like, it is definitely yeah, an adult animated film. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. I think it's super cool. So I, I know what everybody's saying. Anomal fam, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You've given us so many features. It's fifteen, I think, right? Fourteen. 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 Yeah. See, that's there's so many I can't even count. <laughs> it's it's an embarrassment of riches. You couldn't possibly have more for us, right? You're wrong. We fucking do. <laughs> Anomaly. Of course we're going to have more. Let's delve into the shorts program. Um, the first one, is, it's a shorts program called Featured Creatures. Who Yay! wants to talk about those creature features and that featured creatures? It features creatures. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can... <laughs> 
Nailed it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, I can highlight specifically one really quickly. Um, my favorite short in there is Bella and the Slasher. Um, and I believe it's the one of the first couple ones up there out of the gate. And it's... Um, I'm always going to go for the ones that make you feel a little bit warm, but are also dark. So it gives you those type of vibes. Um, and, uh, and, and throughout those, those shorts is, uh, it's called featured creatures, obviously, because it's got a lot of creature work into it, but the, the cinematography on the short, the story, the, um, acting, um, it, it again goes a place that you don't expect. Again, the biggest theme for Anomaly is these stories are going places you don't expect them to go. Um, <laughs> they're going to wrap you in a blanket. We're going to take the blanket off. We're going to shove that blanket right, right on you again. So that's basically what this shorts um, program does to you as well. So we're going to take the blanket. We're going to throw it on you. Maybe we'll shred it a little bit. So when it comes back on you, it's a little less of a blanket. <laughs> But we're gonna start out nice and warm, so maybe we like give you a pillow and then smack you in the face with it as the blanket yeah. is torn. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I promise you, Bella and the Slasher is both fun and a little bit of dark. I just say, and with that, I swear, yeah, because this program also there's you know there's some more animation with Bring Your uh, Bring Your Demon to Work Day. Uh, also, the Haunted Swordsman is a puppet story. Um, which is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, coming out is also is stop motion animation. Yep. Stop motion. Um, Live yep. Forever is a horror musical. Like there's just there's a whole bunch of really cool, fun, interesting ways of genre films continuing to like find new ways of breaking molds. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's it's a fun mix of shorts and visually tell you stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all I got for that. <laughs> Got it. There's there's a lot to be had there, and I'd say you know you're hitting several genres in there. I mean, we all really loved Patch. I remember uh, Magnus. It was, yeah. It's just heartwarming. You love it. There's a robot. There's a robot. Okay, who doesn't love a robot friend? And then and the challenges that kind of come along with that. But um, <laughs> <laughs> bring your demon to work day is so funny. I was in stitches, and then like we were saying, the haunted swordsman. I was just absolutely blown away by the puppet design in that one. So. God. And I think uh, what Cottonmouth is there too, where there's a yep. uh, a familiar horror face in a uh, semi familiar say. situation, and it just feels like, <laughs> oh yeah, oh man, she's never gonna get a good night's sleep. <laughs> <laughs> <Listen, laughs> worried about her. The star power. Yeah. And yeah, it's just a smart little movie that yeah gets in, gets out, gives you a little creep. Like yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And what's good is they're all different like lengths, obviously, because shorts are different lengths, but you know, some of them are a little longer than the other ones, some of them are super short. So And what's nuts is that is but one of our programs. <laughs> Slide on down to the next one. <laughs> I had another segue. I had two in me. <laughs> oh, I can't, oh. can't hear you. Oh. Oh, no, oh, no, Matt. I have to be Matt now. Oh. Wicked Ways yeah. is our next short program. <laughs> Just like the Wicked Way, I forgot that I turned my mute on. <laughs> and the Wicked Way, we are apparently treating our audience this whole festival. <laughs> oh, fire. <laughs> this is why that. I love you guys. When, 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 you know, things start to drip a little bit, you, you, you pick it back up. <laughs> Wicked Ways. Um, so who wants to talk about the shorts in Wicked Ways? Um, I'll just generally say these are a bunch of stories about, you know, the, the darker side of human nature, um, the, the twisted, deeper inner longings that we, you know, don't want to express, but come out whether we want them to or not. Um, and so there's, yeah. <laughs> well said. No, no, nothing. No, he's sitting um, right next yeah, to Matt, run. <laughs> Which was the other way. Like, <laughs> you know what? Don't look surprised. Either so, you constant surprise. What? I have no idea. You both could be murderers. I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> That's different the way styles. Different Keep styles. Keep on your toes. 
for legal reasons, these are all jokes. I keep forgetting I'm on camera while Adam's talking, so it's. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, this again is an, a mix of of tones and genres. Um, I love uh, spiritual practice, um, the the world building that it's able to accomplish in in a short amount of time that I'm, I'm always a fan when a short film like builds a world within, you know, this condensed time frame, And you're like, I want, I want to spend more time there. Um, I say as one I have not seen, there's a ghost in the house. I am always a fan of a sheet ghost. They got a lot of good sheet ghosts. They do. Yeah, they they use the sheet ghost very well in that. Like, from one she goes to another fantastic job. <laughs> I, 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 liked, she goes. Uh, I liked Thorns, which was like just yes. uh, like uh, one just a visually fantastic of like, oh no, oh this couple's going to a creepy motel. It's got creepy motel lighting. Oh no. Oh no. And it has, it builds up a lovely sense of dread in a short amount of time and then has like a nice little ending. You're like, ha! <laughs> one in a short like like tension and then a, oh but with fantastic I, writing i really enjoyed make a wish one because cake and then two <laughs> because um the the tension in a storytelling about like a relationship in like nine minutes and the definition of ride or die of a relationship <laughs> Like really think about who you who who are your ride or die people in your life, and then watch Make a Wish and reevaluate that concept. So. <laughs> to me, it's like it's finding somebody who just gets you on a um, visceral level. Also. I was gonna say that, <laughs> right? I wasn't gonna say like your other half because that's nonsense. But like, so yeah, it just gets you at your most primal, I guess. <laughs> that really, is such a good description. Really, it's a romance story. It's a story about love. Yeah. yeah. I, I'll say it was the first short that I watched and I was like, we're going to have a good year. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Out the gate, killing it. Yeah. <laughs> From there, we'll move on to our third shorts feature, uh, Strange Happenings. Which is kind of the tagline for the entire festival, I feel like. <laughs> Not wrong. Not wrong. Strange happenings. Who's got, oh, that's where bad hair lives. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like a lot of the shorts in this one, I don't have much to say. It's just a quick, like, most of the shorts in this one, from a visual and a sound mm -hmm. level, you just feel them. Like, Specifically, like I, I remember watching Wally and his hideous film form war, and it was one where I was like, just oh my lord, like I'm rooting for him, but at the same time, just the visuals of it and the claymation style just make you it just so wonderfully gross, kind of, and you feel it. And the same thing with like bad hair, where there were parts where I was covering my eyes and the sound made it worse because the sound <laughs> is just so perfectly yeah, covering gone. your eyes is not going to help you with bad hair. No. No. <laughs> no, 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 the Foley. No. It no. lives in me right now. Like I can still hear <laughs> stuff growing out of flat. I don't want to go about like, oh my God. <laughs> Sorry, Aaron. Sorry. This is no. visceral as we keep saying. Yes. Yeah. This, this short but like, way. like we're all like, oh God, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, it's this one hits your senses. <laughs> It's for some people, it's not for some people, but it's for you people out there. So go and watch it. That's right. I also want to mention in this one, uh, two specific things. One is the day the rocket left, mm -hmm. um, which is um, a very short kind of quietish sci-fi. Mm. I feel like I'm just talking to KP. KP, let me tell you about this. Like, I love it. like it's tell great. Me more. I'm here. <laughs> it's just you and me here. <laughs> you will individually sell each person on the festival. <laughs> oh. Um, but the day the, the day the rocket left is also, I think, uh, notable because it is one of the films that we have that was made during quarantine. Like, um, it was you know, completely from start to finish created during quarantine. Um, and I also want to mention uh, Optic Nerve, mm -hmm. um, which again, in terms of like a visceral kind of like feeling and sensation, 
um, of well, psychedelic psychedelic unease, um, and is also one of those things that's it's visually amazing, but definitely if we're talking about things that would work well with a shot, <laughs> um, definitely you're just going to swirl around the room with it. It's it's yeah. great. Like it's super fun and cool. I also want to shout out quickly uh, the Howling Wind, mm-hmm. which I think uh, has this awesome almost twilight zone-y uh, radio play retro feel to it. It's black and white. It's gorgeous. Um, but yeah, it's unlike, I think, anything else in the program. And yeah, in terms of, of story and and visuals is amazing. Um, and also in terms of visuals, uh, Lower World, mm-hmm. I think also is just kind of a, a noir yeah. story. Oh, Neon noir. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's it's just, fantastic. It's gorgeous. Love me some neon noir. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For the good stuff. Uh, Matt, can I make a segue? Absolutely. <gasps> Speaking of more good stuff, <laughs> is uh, we actually have a bonus fourth shorts program uh, called the Shorts Encore, um, which is comprised of um, an amazing set of shorts, but these are also the shorts that are playing before all the features. So just like last year, every feature uh, film in this year's lineup has a short film that's playing before it. And these shorts have been collected and they are now here in one nice shorts package. So if you're into the shorts, you can get all the shorts. Anomaly Scott, you're not going to miss anything. Good. Don't worry. We got you. We wrapped them all up. Jonas. And there's some fun ones in there. Yes. Uh, I'm going to do shout out. Um, I think we have our, I guess our first returning director with Izzy Lee. Yeah. Um, right. Another short, bizarre, unique short for everyone that, yeah, is, I, I feel like, I feel like she has got her own sort of niche now with the, these kind of second in a series of, found footage short films that are just weird and amazing and wonderful. And this one has a song in it. I was going to say an original song, I believe. Because it's Disco Graveyard. Yes. (laughs) Thank you, guys. I should mention the title. Yes, Disco Graveyard, which will lodge itself in your head. It's like she makes mini documentaries of stuff that doesn't actually exist. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, So good. It's a beautiful Mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I... Uh, I say also this one, just other quick ones I want to just quickly shout about are about uh, Death Walks on Nitrate. I I just, I love because again, it's uh, partly shot on old Kodak film, Mm -hmm. uh, literally. And when we saw it, we were like, we were like, (gasps) we were like, look at that. They left the logos. They left all of it in there. Like, it's great. It's fun. It's a nice, again, little like throwback horror short. Um, And, uh, and Gabby, I also Mm -hmm. think. Gabby's so good. <laughs> Gabby's adorable. <laughs> Which is yeah, it's great. I say that. I was just gonna say it was great. And let everyone just take that as a recommendation. You just you need to watch. It, so. I never thought you could take the Kathy comic strip and make it horror. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great description. But boom! Now now it's terrifying. Uh, it's, <laughs> I can't even look. Don't show me like a coffee mug or one of those like you know like three sixty five calendar things. I don't need to see that. I am I'm I'm shooketh. Nothing worse than a than a than a, a crazed fan who thinks that they know best. Oh uh, it's it, it a certain spot. Anyone who's makes That's, stuff like mm. yeah. 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 Yeah, it's fun. It really it's a blast. Um yeah, I, I, a local short 10 13 12. That one's a lot of fun. Um mm-hmm. this this is it's a shorts encore. It's great. Go, go on. Go on. <laughs> There's little Willie, which is like oh, kind of like, you know, uh, you know, it's a bit a little bit chucky. It's it's a little bit like uh, you know, Hollywood crushing you. <laughs> you, you you get uh you know you get some uh you know uh, some more horror uh familiar faces and a lot about like a uh, convention circuit bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> There might be dismemberment. We don't see everything, and that doll's terrifying. Yeah. So, yes, like legit, well designed. Because 
Little Willie's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> so Matt, oh yeah, go Matt. Go ahead, Matt. I just, I, in that case, I just wanted to make sure that we did mention because, uh, in terms of like the geography of a virtual festival and the mm. wildness of this year, um, is that so all of our feature film programs are available to uh, watch by anyone who's in New York State, uh, which is awesome because. Uh, literally, we want you all to travel to Rochester, and next year you better all travel to Rochester to join us in person. But right now, if you're in New York and want to watch the comfort of your own home, that would be awesome, and you should totally join us, and you can. But the shorts programs are all actually available to the entire United States. Hell so yeah. listen, like all your friends in Arizona who you've been telling about Anomaly for the last year, they can watch the shorts this year. Be a part of our world. <laughs> uh, uh, oh. Lawsuit. <laughs> Eric, yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah. I saw the effort it took, though, and I'm proud of you. <laughs> well we all felt it. I felt it. Yeah, like, no, no. yeah. I'm being genuine. I'm proud of you. Mm-hmm. What the? So, nah, I can't win. So that's, that's in a nutshell, in a 90-minute nutshell, what <laughs> We, we did in three half hours what you'll see over the course of four days with the Anomaly Film Festival um, coming to you, to your homes, um, <laughs> November 12th through the 15th. Um, so excited to, to finally bring this to you. Um, there's so much good stuff. It's AnomalyFilmFest.com. Um, passes are on sale now. Individual films are on sale now. Um, we can't wait for you guys to see this stuff. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Join us. Join us. Join us. Just like trying to keep the creep level down. Nope. Yeah. Come on. You've almost got him on the hook. Be yep. cool. Be cool. Anybody. You notice how KP kept her mouth shut. Nope. <laughs> I was like, hey, Enjoy movies. Let's talk about them. Everyone yeah, see, else. She, we she should be the one talking. Because <laughs> <laughs> it sounded genuinely friendly and not on some level of creep like the rest of us. Yeah, We're I in mean, your house. No, that doesn't sound right. No, we'll Meg, be with you all weekend. Oh no, stop it. No, Meg, you're, you're cut. Nope, stop. We've got creepy dolls, we've got dismemberment, we've got nice warm blankets that we'll take off and put on you. It's <laughs> 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 oh, your best friends. <laughs> 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 your best friends and possible nemeses um, and we'll see you November 12th through the 15th anybody else have anything before we we uh, shut this video feed down <laughs> shut this podcast down for now you know what I think we put together a pretty nifty film festival if I do say so myself I should say I think yeah. it's keen and peachy keen <laughs> thank you all for your love and support stay hydrated yeah. <laughs> stay hydrated Stay high, and yeah. don't just dis- no dismemberment until no you watch. Right. Don't tell people how to live their lives. Maybe a little. <laughs> okay, fine. Fair enough. Hey, hey, we, no right. Right. we were doing great. <laughs> Drink lots of water. Keep all your limbs, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. <laughs>